Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video. We're going to be doing a January wrap up. So we'll just get right into it. I read a total of six books this month. Almost every single one of them were fantasy. I'm just very into fantasy right now and I'm excited to like continue on that streak. I'm just going to be reading quite a bit of fantasy for a while right now. I feel it, I feel it in my bones. But let's just get started and talk about all the books I read this month. First, I have Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I read it right at the end of last year, right at the end of the I was about to say December, right at the end of December, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. This is the second book in the trilogy, and I enjoyed this one just as much. I gave it four stars. I just really enjoy Holly Jackson's writing. I think she sets up really good mysteries. She keeps everything very fast-paced. The setting of this series is just, like, really fun, and I don't know, for some reason I find it very cozy, but, like, not in, like, the typical sense. Not that it's not cozy, but it's not like what people usually consider cozy. Like I think truly devious people would consider that more cozy because it's like in a an academy, like a very private school, very elite institution. I'll tell you the synopsis for the first book because since this is the sequel, but the first book follows our main character Pippa or Pip. She decides to reinvestigate the murder of Andy Bell who was a girl from her high school who was murdered five years prior to our story. And she takes on a senior project where she says she's just looking into how this murder affected the town, but really she is reinvestigating it because everyone believes it was Andy's boyfriend, Sal Singh, because he, his body was found with a confession note and everyone believes he killed himself because of the guilt of killing his girlfriend. But Pippa has never believed that. She has always found that really suspicious. She knew him not very well, but she just could not believe that he was the one responsible for Andy's death. So she takes it upon herself to reinvestigate this murder and find out who truly killed Andy. I found the first book to be really, really engaging, really fast paced. We follow Pip as she interviews a lot of Andy's friends, a lot of Sal's friends and sees kind of goes back to the night that Andy was murdered and finds out what really happened. She just investigates and looks into all the people who saw her that day. She looks into all of her friends and what could have what could have happened if it was even possible for Sal to murder her that night. What I really love about these books is they're super, the chapters are so short. The first book especially has, it has alternating chapters between like third person point of view following Pip as she's investigating and then her like actual journal entries for her project. And, and this second book follows Pip investigating another thing that's happening in real time. One of her friend's brothers goes missing and it's just very suspicious. Her friend and his mother don't believe that he is missing of his own volition. Like they don't think he ran away. They don't think it was his decision. They think something suspicious happened and Pippa brings herself back into this detective mode and tries to find her friend's brother. This one, I'll say I maybe didn't love it as much as the first one. I think the first one was like a perfect mystery. I did give both of them four stars because they weren't perfect. Maybe going back to A Good Girl's Guide, maybe it could be five stars, but I just found like some of the writing to be a little bit corny, but the setting, I didn't really talk about that. It's set in a small town in Connecticut and that's just like a very cozy setting for me. It's very familiar for me. I just really love the small town aspect of this. All of the families like knowing each other fairly well and having Pip move around this town and investigate the people in it and like find out everyone's secrets. I'm so excited to pick up the third book in this trilogy. I'm actually going to pick it up today because it comes out in paperback today um, and I just want to own them all in paperback so they're all matching and I'm just very excited to dive right in. I know it's gonna be a super quick read. I'm very excited to see what this last investigation for Pip will entail. I will definitely be picking up more Holly Jackson and this is a great first read for the year. My next read, I actually don't have a copy of. Uh, I borrowed it from the library, but I have the second book for it. This is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, but I read Lady Midnight. This is obviously another book set in the Shadowhunters world. This book follows the events of the war from the Mortal Instruments, the first series in the Shadowhunters world. This one follows our two main characters, Emma Carstairs and Julian Blackthorne. They are both orphans after the war. Their parents obviously have died. Emma's parents' death has always haunted her. She has always been very suspicious of it. Her parents' deaths have always been attributed to the war. 
but they didn't die in battle. Their bodies were found on a beach with demonic runes surrounding them and possibly on them, I don't remember for sure. Very suspicious and confusing circumstances and Emma has always been trying to figure out what really happened to her parents and this book starts off because there have been murders very, very similar to her parents happening again five years later. It's another five year situation and murders and investigating. But we follow Emma and Julian and their friends and all of the people in the Institute investigating these deaths. And Emma especially is trying to figure out what happened because she is pretty certain this is linked to what happened to her parents. I liked this book, but I didn't, I definitely didn't love it. I got very close to loving it. There were a lot of aspects of it that I enjoyed. At first, it was a little hard for me to get into because prior to reading it, I had only read the Infernal Devices and the first two books in the Last Hours trilogy, which I loved those. And I tried reading The Mortal Instruments like years ago, but I just never really got into it. So I much prefer her 1800s London, like England, style of writing like that setting and that atmosphere is just like very very cozy and really good to me like i enjoy that so lady midnight being set like modern day in california wasn't sure how i would like it but once i started to get into it i actually started to like it this follows a bigger cast of characters um not really bigger than cassie's used to at this point she really likes to include a lot of characters in her stories now but this one has a lot just because julian has like five six seven siblings i know he has like five younger siblings the twins other sister other brother maybe another one I think he might have four younger siblings and then like two older siblings. So he has a bunch of siblings. Following all the characters was a little confusing at first, but after a while I started to really like the dynamics between them. This is one thing that I don't know is very like anyone else has thought this or said this before, but I started to really like Lady Midnight after a certain point because it started to give me like Percy Jackson vibes, but grown up. Don't know how accurate that is but there was just something it felt very questy with them investigating the murders them going to like different parts of california they would go to like different areas and like shadow hunter places but they're in our world so it felt very similar to me to like percy jackson where they're going around the country going to these familiar states cities and all that stuff but with Greek god things and in this case shadow hunter things so I really enjoyed that uh the romance wasn't my favorite aspect I started to kind of like it a bit more at one point but they're definitely like not gonna be my favorite couple of Cassandra's I think it is interesting what's propelling me forward is so Emma and Julian are best friends they are parabatai two best friends can basically become parabatai and what that means is they are like literally bound together in battles they fight better together their healing runes heal better if they're like applied to each other rather than someone else applying to them and they can like feel the other's emotions and kind of feel when the other gets hurt so they're very very closely connected and they're best friends but turns out they're also in love with each other and Parapetai are not allowed to be in love so I'm very intrigued to see what will happen because it's extremely forbidden for Parapetai to fall in love and it also hints at like some bigger things that could happen if two Parapetai fall in love I keep saying that I'm just very intrigued to like see what will come about with that romance even if they aren't like one of my favorite couples in the shadow hunters world this book i initially gave four stars after finishing it i think it might be a little more like three and a half just because it didn't really like stick with me that strongly i definitely want to continue with the trilogy but i'm not rushing to i was rushing to i have the book but i might have to push that until until march but this was my second book of the year All right, the third book that I read is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This one I also borrowed from the library, so I don't have it on me. I loved this book when I started it. It was just like one of those things where I kind of wasn't sure what to expect. I had heard fairly mixed things, but overall I was I just like wasn't sure what I would think of it because I was just trying to start getting into fantasy. But immediately from the first page, it just like grabbed my attention and the atmosphere that was like established right away was so good to me. It was like very cozy, very gloomy, but in a good way, very dark academia, but I know it's not necessarily, it's not a very dark academia, a book but the 
feeling of it was. Since we are following the main character, Elizabeth, who is an apprentice for a library, a great library, and the libraries in this book and in this world, and like the librarians are protecting the books because they are literally like living. The books are alive, they breathe, they can talk to you, and there are different classes of books, like class one to 10. So 10 are very dangerous and they like are more, more alive. The librarians are protecting them because they hold a lot of important information. Again, that also determines the class of the book. And if a book gets damaged, it turns into a malefic, which is basically like a book monster. So if something gets spilled on it, if a page gets ripped, anything like that, it will literally transform into a malefic and then it has to be defeated. And if that happens, then all of the information in it is lost if there isn't another copy of the book. So that's another reason why the librarians are important and like the wardens are important because they trap higher level books that are more dangerous but need to be protected because the information in them are very important like the magic, the spells, the history, anything that's in it, like it needs to be protected and they need to be taken care of. They need special care because again, they talk so they can also kind of make you go insane. So something is happening in the libraries across the city where malefics are attacking the librarians. They, someone is triggering these and destroying the books to turn them into malefics. And they are, like I said, attacking and killing librarians. Elizabeth ends up being part of one of these attacks and she is accused of being the one behind it. She is imprisoned and then she is brought into the city to testify for herself but she ends up being brought into the city by a sorcerer named Nathaniel and some stuff ensues. She as a librarian thinks that sorcerers are evil but Nathaniel will kind of show her that's not necessarily the case. Elizabeth begins investigating these series of attacks because other libraries, it's happening in other libraries and she knows that she wasn't the one behind it. She wants to find out who killed her mentor and she wants to protect these books. These books mean a lot to her. She's very connected to the books and the libraries and the grimoires and she feels like it's her duty to figure out what happened because she's the only one who finds this suspicious and she's the only one who's really getting anywhere with this investigation. More investigations, more attacks, you know, there's a theme this month. Like I said, I found the atmosphere of this book very, very cozy, very whimsical and magical and it moved really well in my opinion. I found that Elizabeth continued to figure out more and unpack more with what she was trying to learn and figure out with these attacks. I found the pacing to just be really, really good for a standalone novel. I thought it was going somewhere really exciting. I was excited to get to the end and I liked the way the romance was going and the, I liked Elizabeth as a main character as well. There were some things that were a little, you know, not great. There were some moments where she just randomly would blurt something out. She would randomly realize something and as she realized it, she would just blurt it out and it just didn't really make sense for the conversation, for what was even going on in the story. It just was very random. It kind of seemed like the author didn't know where to put in this realization, so she would just like chuck it in randomly and be like, Elizabeth figured it out. She's so smart. The last 100 pages really fell off for me. I don't want to spoil it, but it just wasn't exactly where I thought the story was going. It kind of ended up in a bigger battle than I wanted. It felt emptier because it was bigger, because it lacked a lot of weight and a lot of stakes. And I thought that having Elizabeth investigate the attacks and going and searching in other libraries, meeting with other sorcerers, stuff like that was very interesting. So to have this really big battle at the end was not it didn't fit where the story was going i wanted something more intimate since elizabeth was the one who was like i said doing a lot of the investigating i wanted something with like her and nathaniel and silas who is nathaniel's demon like servant because all sorcerers have a demon any bits of action throughout the book were very contained very like between elizabeth and a malefict or something like that like just very small and while obviously the end needed to have something a little bit bigger. I think it just was a, too big for the story that was being built. And I lost a lot of interest. I didn't really care that much towards the end. The climax was not very climactic. I ended up giving it four stars when I thought it could have been a five star. And honestly, honestly, it might be a little bit lower than four stars just because I don't see myself ever going back to it. I don't see myself if I like a book, I will want to own it after reading it, and I thought that was going to be the case for this book since I borrowed it from the library, but now that it's been a few weeks, like, I don't see myself going back to it. I don't really want to own it. I don't have any need for it. I think I will check out Margaret Rogerson's other books because I liked her writing. I enjoyed it enough, 
but it wasn't a favorite. It's not really a book that's gonna stick with me much longer. <laughs> Right, the next book that I read is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I might not get into this super in depth because I have a whole reading vlog of me reading it, but I gave this book two stars. If you don't know, this book follows Selena Sardothian, who is a teenage assassin and she has been enslaved, but the prince and the captain of the guard take her to the city and they volunteer her to compete to become the king's personal assassin, the king's champion. And if she wins, she will, like I said, be the king's assassin and work for him for four years and then be granted her freedom. Selena goes along with this because she wants to be free finally. I did not, like I said, I gave this book two stars. I did not really like this book. I found Selena to be a very frustrating and annoying main character to follow. She's annoying, she's arrogant, she's like sassy, but not in a good way. It's like very annoying. And she's just like not likable. We're constantly told how strong she is and how smart she is, but we're never shown it. Even during the competitions, they weren't very interesting and they didn't have that much depth to them where we could see her be challenged and then overcome that challenge and win. They were very simple challenges that made it less interesting to read. We never saw her outsmart anything or overcome something difficult because I think that's what makes a character strong is seeing them struggle but then come out on top still so we never saw that from her she just like knew how to do certain things and then she'd be able to do them and i just never really felt like i could tell that she actually is capable or talented i also did not care for the romance much neither of the guys the prince and the captain of the guard prince dorian and kaol neither of them were interesting she had no chemistry with either of them i there was just nothing interesting going on there they just liked each other they just they just liked each other. There were no reasons, there was no depth to their conversation. They just liked to read or they both liked looking at each other basically. This was two stars for me. I'm not, I haven't been the biggest fan of Sarah J Maas so far. I've read this and A Court of Thorns and Roses. I gave A Court of Thorns and Roses three stars. So I definitely disliked this more or I definitely like that one more but i don't see myself continuing with either of these series i won't say never because i've heard that this series gets better so i'm just kind of intrigued to see like where it goes and see how i feel about it even though i don't have that much interest in reading it i have a bigger chance of reading crescent city i'm actually kind of maybe reading house of earth and blood right now Shh. just because that series intrigues me a little bit more with the more modern fantasy setting and it feels different from throne of glass and aquatar so I'm intrigued by it. We'll talk about it another time. If I even continue with another book or two, I don't see myself ever finishing this series. It just is not for me. My next book is a much, much bigger upgrade from that last one, and that is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy, and as you can see, I annotated this and i had such a good time reading this for the first time obviously i really really loved this i love the world that was built and i did give it four and a half stars so it wasn't entirely perfect but it was almost there i just had some very trivial issues with the book um not necessarily with the story well kind of i'll get into them later but i found it so fun to dive into this new world i thought it was so so well built and well crafted like brandon sanderson knows what he's doing he knows what he's building and where the story is going there's just so much happening so many politics so much action it's such a great magic system this story follows two really main characters um kelsier and vin kelsier is the survivor of the lord ruler um who is the basically the dark lord of this world he has been ruling over the final empire for over a thousand years and he has oppressed the ska which is a group of people in this world and they are basically just made to be slaves and laborers for the noblemen and kelsier is a ska he's actually half ska half nobleman and he was punished by the lord ruler but kelsier survived that punishment and kind of has become like a legacy in and of himself where he is the survivor and vin is our other main character who is a 16 year old girl who is also a ska she has been moving through thieving groups and she is found by kelsier and his people and he is building up a crew to overthrow 
the final empire and the lord ruler and it is just an insane plan there's so much to this story the magic system is so so good it basically has to do with metal and there are mistings and mistborn mistings can control or work with only one metal and mistborns can work with all metals and there are over eight there are like 10 metals plus there is just so so much to this story like i said there's a lot of political intrigue the characters are so good and the relationships between them i really enjoyed i think that there's a lot of character growth character arcs the characters are really shifting and changing and learning throughout this book and while you're re rooting for these characters you are also seeing the, their flaws and you do see them make mistakes you do see them fail and i think that is so great because it creates so much tension and the ending of this book just like explodes like so much happens it is so engaging and here wait i want to see if you can see so this dark blue color that is my like shocking and like crazy tab towards the end those were like the only tabs i was really using because so much was happening i was like oh my god like being thrown everywhere in every direction but getting into some of the problems that i had they were really really small so that's why it's only a half star like my only knock at the book half a star i found some of the dialogue to be not great a little unrealistic it didn't flow super well in some scenes and my other problem that actually put quite a damper on one aspect of this book was the romance vin has a love interest and like i said i think she's 16 years old and the romance that begins to build i was actually having so much fun with i enjoyed the dynamic between them really well like i was starting to get very giddy and i was very surprised by that and then we found out he's 21 years old <laughs> um i know this is a fantasy series and fantasy series kind of play with ages a bit like there are some characters who are hundreds if not thousands of years old and then there's like you know a 19 year old girl that they're gonna date which is a little questionable so the five year age difference isn't crazy but a lot of the other characters when talking about vin would always talk about how small she looked how young she looked kelsier called her child so much obviously he's more of an adult he's in his 30s so many of the characters would refer to her as a child and it just every scene after that i just couldn't help but think about her looking so young and him being more of an way more of an adult like he's an adult at 21 years old so the age difference just put a little bit of a damper on the romance even if he was just aged down like two to three years it would have been so much better like he could have just been 18 i don't know why he had to be 21 otherwise i really really enjoyed this book and i cannot wait to continue with this series like i'm so excited to see what sanderson has come up with what he has built because the series ends in such a different place than where it started and i'm very excited to read more sanderson this year in general so yes four and a half stars for this Lastly, I decided to reread Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare in anticipation for the release of Chain of Thorns today. I'm going to get it today. I was a little ambitious with this reread. So on Thursday, January 26th, it is the 31st right now, so that was like five days ago, I finished The Final Empire and then that night I was like, why don't I try to reread Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron before Chain of Thorns comes out? did not happen i really pushed myself to try and read chain of gold in three days and try to read chain of iron in three days as well again it did not happen and i'm only gonna end up reading chain of gold before i pick up chain of thorns i just want to pick it up immediately and i don't want to like i don't want to wait any longer i love this book i annotated it when i first read it a little i like put tabs i put tabs the first time i read it and then i switched them out for these really pretty ones and then as i reread i added more <sighs> i have so many like thoughts about this series and this book this book is so good i won't get into it too much just because it is a reread this series follows the children of the characters in the infernal devices which i love that series so much there are a lot of characters in this book and in this series so it's kind of a lot but once you get into it they're really really great the relationships between them are so good the characters themselves just have like so much depth they're so interesting there's so much to these characters
characters and like their lives and like what they've been through and what they're currently going through. Basically though, this follows Shadowhunters again. I'm gonna have to read only one Shadowhunter book next month because I need to chill. This book follows our team of Shadowhunters in the early 1900s in London, England. Demons, for like the past few years, probably over like a decade, demons haven't really been attacking London. And the Institute, the Shadowhunters have found this to be kind of suspicious, but they didn't really question it because they're safe from the demons now. But now, all of a sudden, demons are attacking again. And not only that, they're attacking during the daytime, which is like not something demons do. They only come out at night. The sunlight is harmful for them. Like, it, this is weird. This is very, very weird. So our characters are tasked with finding out why these demons are attacking in the daytime, what they're after, why they've shown up now. Along with that, we get a lot of romance, friendship, ghosts, and romance. <laughs> I just love this series and I'm very excited to read the final book. I cannot wait to see how this concludes. We will see and I will annotate the heck out of that book. These are all of the books that I read this month. This is a lie and I'm also missing one of the books, but these are the books that I read this month. It was a pretty good reading month in my opinion. I'm so excited to continue reading this year. I have so many fantasy plans and I just can't wait to continue with some of the series that I've started this month and finish off some of the series as well. So like I said, that was everything that I read this January. Let me know what your favorite book of this month was. I think mine was Final Empire. Um, obviously Chain of Gold was a reread, but of the new books that I read, Final Empire was so good and I'm just so excited to continue reading Brandon Sanderson's writing. I look forward to reading the second book next month, absolutely. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.